Hello everybody, my name is Jared and welcome to John Red Gaming. Welcome to a game called The Excavation of Hobbs Barrow. Now we played a demo of this game some time ago, Ooh, but it was a different name back then. It was called Incantamentum or something like that. This is the full game finally released. I've been waiting for it for quite some time. Despite the name change, I'm really looking forward to seeing what else is in store with this game. So let's just dive straight in. Ah, yes, and here we are. A proper lady in the rain, and somebody's coughing. Not a good start. This looks great. I vaguely remember this. I don't know how much this beginning part's going to vary differently from the game that we played so long ago. Ah, Miss Bateman, welcome back to Ticehurst House. Why, well, thank you. I don't remember there being voice acting before. I think they added voice acting, that's great. It's been quite some time. Pretty sure I did the voices for this game when I played it before, and I'm pretty sure I did a good job, but did they hire me? No. We're only having oh, a conversation. This evening, is it not? Yes, yes, it Nurse is. Nurse Blaketon has had enough of me smoking inside. It makes her cough, you see. The rain this. won't kill me, will it? We have nothing to say, apparently. Well, you mustn't be interested in me nattering on. Give my regards to your father. Nurse Blaketon is preparing his supper. She clearly hates this guy. <laughs> you look pale, Miss Bateman. Do head inside. He's trying to get uncomfortable. Here. Speaking of death. Hmm. Ooh. The excavation of Hobbs Barrow. Ooh. Oh. And now we're in the country. Oh, this is lovely. I don't know if this was in the original Dearest demo. Dearest Mother, I hope this letter will reach you. This is really nice. I have spent these past years in torment, trying to piece together what remains of fractured memories. What I am about to recount to you will seem beyond comprehension, but I beg for your patience. Okay, I, I vaguely remember the sheep. <laughs> I don't know why, but I remember the sheep. Because they look at us in a weird way. I will endeavour to explain the events that led me to Ticehurst House that night. As far as I can recall, this whole wretched story started with the receipt of a letter from a Mr. Leonard Shoulder. Mr. Shoulder? Ooh. Close up. Face close ups in old point and click adventure like style games are always a little jarring. The letter brought me to the isolated village of Bewley, deep in the moors. And here we are. By train. No station master in sight. Blast. I hope the village isn't too far away. It's I very far away. I can't our exact meeting place. Mr. Shoulder mentioned it in his letter. If I take the sign, how would the trains know where to stop? I didn't want you to take the sign. All right, let's check our inventory. We've got the letters. Dear Mrs. Bateman, I write this letter in the hope of piquing your curiosity. I read about your expertise in barrows, and if I understand correctly, you're writing a book on them and the treasures they contain. I live in the village of Bule, where a most special barrow can be found on the outskirts. It is rectangular in form and is certainly tall enough to stand up in. The place is steeped in local legend, and there's room for secrets to be found deep within. I hope you will not misunderstand me and find this letter intrusive. If you wish to visit Bule and excavate the barrow, I'll be pleased to be your guide. Please send your response to the plow and furrow in Boule. Boule is a weird. It's a weird name. Boule. I will wait your letter. Yours respectfully, Mr. Leonard Shoulder. Oh, there's a person. Hold on, I'm reading my letters in the rain. Dear Mrs. Baton, marvelous news. I shall meet you at eight o'clock in the evening on the fourteenth of this new month, and the plow and furrow in the inn has fine rooms which you will find adequate for your short stay. When we meet, I shall tell you more of the circumstances surrounding the site, which is referred to locally as Holmes Barrow. It is not located on my own land, but we will have no issue gaining permission to excavate. I wish you a safe journey. Who's this lady, this woman? Excuse me, Excuse old woman. Excuse me. Yes? Can you tell me where the Plough and Furrow I'm Inn is? I'm looking for the Plough and Furrow Inn. Do you know where I can find it? Ah, young lady. Leave the station and follow the dry stone wall for around half a mile. You'll come to Bewley. Go straight ahead and you'll find the Market Square. The inn is to the side at Square. Thank you very much. Where are you travelling to today? That would be none of your business, young lady. 
I mean, she's not wrong. Quite. Apologies. <laughs> what can you tell me about Bewley? Well, it used to be a thriving village. Not so much now. I don't spend much time there these days. Are you local? Ah, yes, a local I am. But I don't live in the village. I wish you a pleasant journey. Let's get back out of here. What brings you to Bewley? Well, excuse me? You mind your own business, old lady. Can we tell her that? Pardon? What brings you to Bewley, Mix? Tell the truth, or should we lie? She definitely seems suspicious, but she's an old lady. How much harm could she be? Let's just tell the truth. I'm here to visit a local landmark, Hobbs Barrow. Hobbs Barrow? Well, I can't say I've heard of it. For what reason? I wish to excavate it. Grave robber, are you? Are we? Not at all. I merely have an interest in antiquities. Not much to be found in Bewley, if you ask me. You're better off waiting for the next train back to the city. I'll take my chances. Hmm. Mmm, sound to scare me off, are you? Can't say I didn't warn you. Be gone, old woman, old crow. That was odd. I don't have time for your shenanigans, old lady. I need to be on my way. Ah, I love the rain effects. It looks great. Is this... Oh, a crow? I remember the crow slightly. Hi, crow. Nice of you to stop by for a bit. Shall we check the old the doors? woman told me to go straight ahead to get to the inn. Well, we should definitely do I'll what the old lady to says. Tomorrow. Okay, okay, let's just go straight to the inn then. And here we are. We're just, we're just there. We're just in town. No point in clicking on anything because she's probably just going to say the same old thing. Ah, the plow and furrow. The sign is well out of reach. I don't want you to pick it up, lady. I want you to read it. The plow and furrow inn. The inn where I am to meet Mr. Shoulder. Let's the us plow own. and furrow. Oh, that's right. I remember this. I remember this bloke. I have a bit of time before Mr. Shoulder arrives. I should inquire about a room. Um, excuse me, man? The man looks thoroughly inebriated. Oh, he drunk. He blasted. Hello there. Aye? What's the young lady doing out alone in this sodden weather? What are you doing out in this weather? What are weather? you doing out hmm? in this weather? Answer me that. Waiting for you, my dear. Oh, I don't think I so. I doubt that. And I've waited long enough. So, give us a kiss now, won't you? You don't even know me. I think not. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, yes, that's the face that I just want to smooch. <laughs> Slap him. How dare you? How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> Wench! Bastard! <laughs> what a buffoon! Get on out of here! Unbelievable. I should <sighs> speak to the innkeeper about a room. What about this man, though? Good day, sir. Okay. Not a good day, apparently. Let's good afternoon. The, let's talk to the innkeeper. Good afternoon, lass. How can I help you? I am in need of a room for the night. Aye. We aren't short of those. One night, is it? I shall need at least two nights, maybe more. Aye, tis not a problem. Three shilling per night. That includes your dinner and tea. Oh, that's a deal. A fair price. I'll need that payment up front for the two nights. Hmm, of course you will. Do I have money? Oh, I do have money. Here you go. This is payment for the room. Thank you. Can I ask for your name, lass? Thomasina Bateman. And will Mr. Bateman be staying with us tonight? No, I am not wed. Mmm, scandalous! My assistant is arriving in Bewley tomorrow. Your assistant, you say? Will you be needing another room? Mmm. Please. I'll keep a room spare. It's not quite as nice as yours, I'm afraid. I should hope not. My assistant does not deserve a better room than me. Not a problem, sir. I'm sure it will be adequate. Kenneth is a man of inexpensive taste. Here's your key. Thank you. Just go through the door to the right of the bar, then up the stairs. Oh, I will. Room number two. Of course thank it. you. Can I help you with your luggage? No, thank you, sir. I can manage. I'm a strong, independent woman. I don't need no I man. I go upstairs and freshen up before Mr. Shoulder arrives. But there's so many people to talk to. Can I not talk to anyone till I've freshened up, or can I talk to people now? Good afternoon, sir. Note for your ear. Oh, I beg what? your pardon? I said there's note for your ear, lass. Be on your way. Okay. Charming. Everyone's so mean. What are these people doing? Hello, sir. We are in the middle of a discussion here. I mean, yeah. Sorry to interrupt. You're right. <laughs> I guess we should just... Oh, is this the water closet? I do closet? not need to use the lavatory. Fine. Okay, let's just go to our room. We don't know. We have, there's, not, there's not for us here. 
Oh, it's a lovely room, actually. This shall do nicely. Yeah, it's a Time shabby. to change into something more comfortable. <gasps> Pants? How scandalous. <sighs> Much better. All right, let's take a quick look around. Can we get in the wardrobe? I've hung my dress inside. Aside from that, the wardrobe is empty. Good to know. What about the chest? I've stored my case in there. A box within a box. Boxception. Okay, okay. Drawers. Is there a Bible Jammed in there? Shut. The wood must have warped over the years. <laughs> they should fix that. We paid quite a bit of my shillings for this room. What's this? Matchbox. <sighs> Complimentary matches. Useful. Oh, yeah. Oh, good. Our first inventory. There's only one match left, though. I mean... We had inventory before, but it's our first required inventory. All right, let's go back downstairs. Perhaps we can get pint before Mr. Shoulder arrives. Miss Bateman, you've transformed. Yes. I feel far more comfortable in my outdoor clothing. You look like one of those explorers you see in the newspaper. I guess you could call me an explorer of sorts. I'm Stanley. Stanley Kemp. A pleasure to meet you, Stanley. Yes. And tell me, I trust your room is adequate. Uh, except for the drawers that are stuck. Most adequate. Excellent. We're not going to mention the drawers. I'm looking for a man named Leonard Shoulder. Aye, I know the man. I'm to meet him here tonight. Can I get you something to drink while you wait? Yes, yes, yes. Not yet, thank oh. you. What can you tell me about Mr. Shoulder? Aye, he's a quiet fellow. He only comes here to check his post. Yes, I've been corresponding with him using this address. Have you now? You found yourself an admirer. It's not like that, Mr. <laughs> Kemp. Not quite. What business do you have with old Leonard, then? Mind your own business, sir. We're giving us the options to be truthful or not, and I'm wondering how that will have bearing on us and over the overall scope of the game. Hey, there's no reason to lie to the bartender. We want the bartender to be our friend. I don't want to get caught in a lie. Well, if you must know, I am what some people call a barrow digger. A what? A barrow digger. What in God's name is that? Maybe we should have lied to him. He can't handle the truth. Are you familiar with tummy lie? Afraid not. Barrow is another word for tumulus, or tumuli in the plural. A profoundly interesting subject. Hmm. You've lost me. <laughs> I excavate ancient burial sites looking for relics. A barrow is traditionally a circular mound of raised earth enclosing a burial chamber. Oh, I? You're a grave robber. No, no, no. Well, yes, but no. I am no such thing. Don't worry, lass. I've met all sorts in here over the years. I won't tell anyone. I assure you, my goal is more noble than petty grave robbery. What sort of relics do you find, then? Gold? Silver? Bones? Well, rarely gold or silver, but treasures, certainly. Ancient pottery is the most common find. Boring. I've been excavating barrows all <laughs> over the country. I'm documenting my findings in preparation for my book. It shall be called Vestiges of the Antiquities in Rural England. Oh, fancy. Oh, aye. Very interesting. But what does old Leonard have to do with this? He sent me a letter in which he told me about an unusual barrow in Bewley, a site called Hobbs Barrow. I'm meeting him here this evening to find out more. I've lived here nigh on my whole life, and I've heard nout about a Hobbs Barrow. Are you sure you've never heard of Hobbs Barrow? Not in my life, lass, but I'll tell you something. The more stretch further than the eyes can see once you leave this village. There's no doubt many a discovery to be made. Mr. Shoulder mm. said the Barrow is well known locally, a place of legend. I think Mr. Shoulder was perhaps lying. I'm afraid you're going to have to speak to him about it. Why are you interested in digging around in the dirt, lass? Haven't you better things to do with your time? I enjoy nothing more than the thrill of discovery, uncovering the past and piecing together our history. I inherited this passion from my father. Oh, a barrow digger too, were he? Indeed. He would take me with him on excavations as a child. Does he still come with you now, on your own adventures? I'm afraid my father's been bedbound by illness for many years. Oh, I am sorry to hear that, lass. Thank you, Mr. Kemp. He is well looked after at a private hospital. What can you tell me about Bewley? Aye, it's a quiet place. People keep to themselves, work hard. I look forward to exploring the village tomorrow. There's not a lot to see, lass. But St. Edmund's Church is a fine building, worth a visit. 
Tell me about yourself, Mr. Kemp. Yes, do tell. Well, uh, I've been the proprietor of this inn for the last 16 years. It's a long time. I worked as a drover all over the country in my younger days, saved up my coin and bought this place. It's a fine inn. Oh, it's fine indeed. Thank you. I often run short of ale, but my rooms are rarely full. We don't get many outsiders wanting to stay overnight here in Bewley. Kind of feels like opening an inn was perhaps not the greatest of business adventures. Thanks for your time. As you were. Who's this old man playing with his crotch over here? Hello, sir. Hi. Do you know a Mr. Leonard Shoulder? You're not local. <laughs> You're quite perceptive. You've come on that bloody train, haven't you? Don't trust trains. Well, it's going to dogs. Okay. Uh, perhaps we should introduce ourselves properly. My name is Thomasina Bateman, and you are... None of your business, lass. Mm, very, very rude, Where's yeah. Where's your husband? None of your business, sir. <laughs> Take that. Ha! Ah, you're brave coming in here, all on your own. It's an inn. I'm a grown woman. I'm Cyril. Ah, there you go. Give me a damn name, you old fart. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance, Cyril. Do you know Mr. Shoulder? That'd be none of your business, lass. Just why? Why are you like this, old man? Why? What made you this way? I don't come to your city poking around asking questions, do I? Man just wants to enjoy his ale in peace. I mean, he does have a point. Like, if I was sitting in an inn or a tavern just having an ale and someone came up to me and just started asking me questions, I'd be a little put off as well, I think. Maybe we can leave. I should wait here for Mr. Shoulder. Well, then wait. Where am I supposed to wait? No one wants to talk to me. Everyone's so mean to me. Maybe I give him some money for a drink. I've already paid for board. I want booze, not board. I think I just need to try to talk to everybody. Hello, sir. What? I'm waiting here for a man named Leonard Shoulder. Do you know him? I don't. Do you, love? Never heard of him. There you have it. Now clear off. Everyone's so mean. Mr. Shoulder should really be here by oh now. Oh my gosh, we had to actually speak to everyone about everything before this dude shows up. I'll sit down and wait. Where? Everyone hates you now, because you've interrupted their conversations and butted into their private time. <laughs> Where on earth is he? What a waste of time this is turning out to be. Oh, great. Evening there, miss. Not you again. I can smell him a mile away. Not you again. I just wanted to apologize for earlier. Oh. I deserve that slap. That you did. I'm sorry for my behavior. You should be. The drink gets a hold of me sometimes. Let's start again, shall we? Don't tell me you're freaking Leonard Shoulder. My name is Arthur Tillett. Okay. Thomasina Bateman. No, I didn't. What brings you to Beulah I didn't say anyway? you could sit down and join me. <laughs> I'm here to meet someone, but he has not arrived. His loss, if you ask me. Perhaps you know the gentleman, Mr. Leonard Shoulder. Oh, I know Mr. Shoulder all right. If I may be so bold as to say, he's a bit long in the tooth for you. The relationship is not what you're implying. <laughs> I've never met him. In fact, I know very little about him at all. Get me an ale and I'll tell you all about the old sod. You don't need any more booze, dude. Is it must I really? Must I really buy you a drink for this information? Please. Are you sure it's wise to have another? Please. <laughs> oh, God. Don't you want to hear about old Leonard's shoulder? I mean... You drive a hard bargain, Mr. Tillett. As you wish. Thank oh. you very much, Miss Bateman. I mean, I do want to know, but I mean, we're going to meet him. Like, why do we need to, like, indulge this guy's alcoholism? A tankard of your finest ale, Mr. Kemp. Am I allowed to drink? Are you going to assume that a lady shouldn't drink? Is that what's going to happen next, Mr. Kemp? Make your there assumptions. Two pence, please. No? Okay, just take my money Thank then. Thank you. This was the last of my money. Oh, shite. But Kenneth will be here tomorrow with more funds. We're spending the last of our money on this freaking drunk? Here you are, Arthur. Tell me everything. Thanking you. After a drink. Oh, that hits the spot that does, lass. Oh, I bet it does. Now then. Mm -hmm. Old Len. Uh-huh. Leonard Shaw. Oh God, that was the that was the last drink to put him over, isn't it? Oh, for the love of God! Arthur. <laughs> it just figures. Mr. Tillett. He's out. Oh, for heaven's sake, the man is in a drunken stupor. We shouldn't have given him any booze. He's out. He's not dead. 
just very drunk. I would still like to hear what he has to say about Mr. Shoulder. Maybe Mr. Kemp has an, a remedy. How can I help you? Oh, water. May I trouble you for a glass of water? If it's water you're after, I just refilled the jug in your room for you. Thank you. Uh, uh, Thanks I, for your time. Can't you just give me a cup of water, yes, dude? Were. I gotta go all the way to my room to get my wash basin. Jug of water. This may come in handy. <laughs> okay. What about I the bowl? I don't wish to carry the bowl around with me. But you'll carry the jug. Okay. All right, dude. Time to wake up. Wakey, wakey. Oh, what the hell was that for? You passed out, Mr. Tillett. Oh, sorry, lass. <laughs> where were I? Leonard's shoulder. Hold on another minute. I'm making for a piss. Oh, my God, this guy. For the love. This man is unbelievable. You're not wrong. What's going to happen? How long have it we been like waiting? An hour has passed. I think an hour has passed. Perhaps I should go in there and check on him. I don't think we should do that. Miss Bateman. What? My apologies. The ladies are closed due to faulty plumbing. You'll have to use the gents. Okay. Lovely. I was going to check up on the dude anyway, so... Ooh. Mr. Tillett. Why is it so spooky suddenly? What's that noise? Something's happening in here. I'll take this the jug. jug. is empty. Never mind. Urinals. I would rather not get any closer. The smell of urine is nauseating. Gross. I'm hearing something. Something's happening. You okay? Mr. Tillett? You in there? Mr. Tillett, are you in there? I don't think he is. Let's try the next one. Although he should have heard us. Mr. Tillett, are you in there? Oh, oh, kitty. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, the kitty. I remember the kitty. Well, you're not Mr. Tillett. Or is it? Perhaps Mr. Tillett turned it to the kitty I'd cat. I'd rather not touch it. The thing stinks to high heaven. Oh, poor kitty is trapped in the bathroom. No wonder. Perhaps this door? The door opens a crack. But appears to be blocked from the other side. Hmm. I hear something. I think I can hear someone moving around. Is it Mr. Tillett? Did he escape? Mr. Tillett? Arthur, are you out there? <laughs> fool. Judging from the draft coming from below, this door must lead outside. I should investigate further. By going around? I hope no one's going to try to stop me. I'm just getting to the end. Ooh. Oh, yes, I like this foggy ambience. Very nice. Excuse me, sir. Ooh, who that? Who that? Who was that? Who this dude? Who this dude? We just gonna follow him? What about the alleyway? Well, that light just turned off. I think we should follow him. Hmm. I don't know why. We should not. The old not man has disappeared into the darkness. I best turn back to the inn. Oh, yeah, we don't want to venture out into the moors in the, at night during a storm. Let's go down this dark, creepy alleyway and hopefully not get mugged. Oh, a glove. A pearly white gent's glove. It's certainly unlike anything Mr. Tillett was wearing. Mm, indeed. Some hitching posts and some barrels. Can I open the door hmm. from the side? Someone has wedged the door shut. Oh, Unwedge it. Mr. Tillett. Why would he have done that? He doesn't want to answer the questions. He wanted a beer and dash, jerk. Did Mr. Tillett leave, then block the door behind him? Something strange is going on here. Why is the bathroom so creepy, though? <laughs> That's what I want to know. What's happening? Oh, last call. Last orders. Yes. <laughs> we better go get... Oh, we don't have any money because we I spent the last... some sleep. ...of our dang money on that drunk. Finding the missing men of Beaulieu shall have to wait for tomorrow. Okay. Sure would have liked an ale, but I spent it on the drunk guy, and then he absconded with my information. Kenneth will be arriving tomorrow at midday. I should get some sleep. Freaking Leonard Shoulder never showed. That's not good either. Go to bed. Yes, I'm tired. Yes, I must get some sleep. I shall track down Mr. Shoulder tomorrow. Miss Bateman? Yes? Yes? Off to bed. Why are you asking? Yes. I'm afraid Mr. Shoulder has let me down. The rotter. Perhaps he will make himself known tomorrow. I should hope so. 
This is turning into a waste of my time. Mm. Ah, don't mind the locals, miss. It's just that we don't get a lot of visitors in Bewley. Quite. They mean well, believe mm. me. I don't know about that. Sure, Mr. Kemp. Please, call me Stanley. Nope, we're not gone first name basis, sir. Good night, Stanley. Sleep okay. well, Miss Bateman. I guess we are. Ooh. Oh, I know what's about to happen. We're just sleeping away. I, I don't know why our candle is lit, though. Oh. Uh oh. Yes, yeah, the kitty cat. The stinky kitty. Oh. Oh, it's so weird looking. It's so weird looking. We probably smell it first. Hello. Don't like it. Oh, the first day, Adventus. Adventure awaits. The first day, perhaps I dreamt of the evil kitty and it wasn't real. Such horrid dreams. Creepy kitty that smelled of urine. Bolted from the inside, just as I left it last night. Oh. Hmm. As I suspected, I must have dreamt of that wretched looking cat. Poor kitty. It's not its fault. I must say I'm relieved. Right then. Let's see if I can track down the elusive Leonard's shoulder. I'm rather anxious to get to this barrow. I also wonder what happened to Mr. Tillett. I'm less concerned about what happened to Mr. Tillett. He was just a drunken jerk. Oh, Mr. Kemp. Good morning, Miss Bateman. Yes. Good day, Stanley. Can we talk to him about the cat? Did you sleep well, Miss Bateman? Yeah, tell the truth. I want to know about the cat. He probably has never seen the cat, but we'll tell the truth again. Not really. I have the rather queer recollection of a cat entering my room last night. A cat, you say? Yes, you know of this cat. Yes, an odd-looking grey one. I must have been dreaming as I locked the door and windows before I went to sleep. I saw a similar cat in the lavatories while searching for Mr. Tillett. Ah, Herbert. Oh, oh, he's a harmless thing. So you know of this cat? He comes in now and then searching for scraps. Indeed. Seeing him in the lavatories must have conjured up the strange dream. This cat can somehow just help himself into a locked room, though? The mind is capable of manifesting frightful things, Miss Bateman. You're not wrong. I'm happy to report the rain of yesterday has lifted. It's a clear morning outside. Nice. Crisp. Yes. I've prepared a room for your assistant. What time will he be arriving today? His train will get in around midday. Kenneth will also be bringing my excavation equipment. Oh, I. What does that entail? Picks, shovels, buckets, lighting and such. He usually packs it in a large crate. Come to think of it, I'll need somewhere to store it. You're welcome to use the alley behind the inn for any no. such bulky items. That doesn't seem secure. Uh, yeah, let's, let's question that. Is it safe to do such a thing? I can assure you the local folk are not thieves, Miss Bateman. That's not what I... Uh, that is exactly what I was insinuating. Now, now, say nothing more of it. Thank you, Stanley. I'll let you get on with your day. I'll be back with my assistant when he arrives. Uh, yeah. Miss Bateman? Oh, for everyone always has the last word. Yes? I've something I wish to get off my chest, as it were. I've been tossing and turning all night, Miss Bateman. I feel rotten, I really do. What on earth are you talking about? As you know, I like to run an honest establishment. Do I know that? I only just met you. And well, I have not been honest with you, lass. I do know of Hobbs Barrow. Oh, you scamp. You do? I do. Many here do. There are stories tied to that place, you know. If I've learned anything in this life, it's that some stones are best left unturned. Mm. Old Leonard's shoulder is someone to be wary of, too. I can't tell you what to do, lass, but you'd best avoid him. But I came here specifically to meet him and go to the Sparrow. Why lie to me about Hobbs Barrow? I know, lass, I know. I feel dreadful. As you should. But why? What are these stories you speak of? I really can't tell you more. If you insist on visiting that place, you'll have to seek out Mr. Shoulder. He brought you here. He should be the one to tell you. Hmm. I must say, Mr. Kemp, this is all quite puzzling. Indeed, quite the mystery. I've never let local superstitions stop me in the past. I pride myself on being a woman of logic and reason. I have no time to waste on such matters. As I say, <laughs> seek out Mr. Shoulder. 
He can tell you more. Seek him out or don't seek him out. Y'all need to make up your mind. Should I trust him or shouldn't I? Should I be weary of him or should I not? Why must I be wary of Mr. Shoulder? The man has a certain reputation. For what? You've seen it already. Were he here to meet you last night? No. Precisely. A man not to be trusted. Because he didn't show up for a meeting. I mean, that's kind of harsh for such a thing. Where does Mr. Shoulder live? I can't say for sure. You can't say or you won't say? As I think I told you last night, he's a quiet man and keeps to himself. He only comes in here to collect his post. Leads me to believe he lives a fair distance away. Certainly not in the village itself. Hmm. Might someone around Bewley be able to help me find him? You could ask around. As I say, lass, Bewley folk mean well. Don't forget that. Oh, I've already forgotten it. They are, they're just going to be mean to me and I won't forgive them. Where is Hobbs Barrow? I, I don't know. I say that on my mother's grave, Miss Bateman. Mm. Hmm. I now find that hard to believe. You've already lied to me once, Mr. Kemp. How can I ever trust you again? The moors are vast, lass. I tend not to go wandering out there. A grown man could lose himself and not be seen again. Hmm. I shall return later. Good day to you, lass. Off I go. Finally can we leave this place. I wish to see the town. Oh, it ooh. seems I may be fighting a battle against some sort of local superstition. Indeed. Is there a single barrow in England that doesn't have some ghastly oh. tale attached to it? Hogwash. All of it. <laughs> I have a few hours until Kenneth arrives. I should use this time to find Mr. Shoulder. Let's talk to this scrupulous looking man. Hello, my name is Thomasina, and you are... Now then, that's none of your concern, love. Come on, guys. Why would you be so, like, like this to just a charming young lass? Do you know a man named Leonard Shoulder? I don't know out about no Leonard Shoulder. This is this is this is what we're gonna this is what we're gonna have to contend with. A bunch of tight-lipped, superstitious locals. What do you do around here? Hey, up! You're not scared of sticking your neb in. I look after the churchyard, dig the graves. What can you tell me about the church? Aye, it's a church. Oh, thanks. Quite. What can you tell me about Hobbs Barrow? Now to be found digging around in those things. You know of local barrows, then? Don't concern yourself. He's a grave digger, whatever, so he probably does know about all what that. What can you tell me about Bewley? Not much around here, love. Not worth mentioning to you, like. I see. Jeez. Goodbye. Ta-ra. Ta-ra, whatever that means. Why is everyone so horrible? I don't deserve this. Oh, a child. What are you doing? Hello. I yes. Speak to me, I'm a stranger. My name is Thomasina. What's yours? Douglas. Hello. It's a pleasure to meet you, Douglas. Is the child going to be horrible as well? That's a great sword technique you have. Thanks, miss. Mr. Crozier's gonna make me a real one when I turn 12. I doubt that. I'm preparing myself to fight the lantern worm. The what? <laughs> what is the lantern worm? It's gonna come back and get us all. John Lampton <laughs> thought he killed it at the River Ware, but my father told me it still lives. We must all be prepared. The lantern worm isn't real, Douglas. Father just told you that to get you out of his air. Not true. I saw it slithering out by the beck, like a giant eel it were. I ran home so fast I thought I would fly. Sorry, miss. <laughs> <laughs> My brother has a vivid imagination. That's your brother? Children often do at his age. I'll keep training. You will all thank me when I thrust my sword deep into its fat belly. Douglas, this lady doesn't want to hear your nonsense. Um, I do, actually. I'm, I'm rather piqued my interest now. Do you like living in Bewley? Yeah, I do. Are you from the city? I'm from a long way away. You <sighs> must have come on the train. I love watching all the steam puff up into the sky. Have you been on the train yourself? No, miss. Our parents don't have the money for train tickets. Father says we have all we need here in Bewley. Oh, of course he does. <sighs> Perhaps this nice lady would like to take you away with her on the train. No. No, I need nope. to stay and protect Bewley from the lantern worm. I don't want to, I don't want the child. I really don't want the child. Do you know a man called Leonard Shoulder? That's a funny name. That's no then. Have you heard of Hobbs Barrow? What's that? A local burial mound. Our parents don't let us wander far from the village. I no wonder she's yawning over here. They don't get to leave this tiny little horrible village. 
They must be so bored out of their minds. What's a burial mound? Don't you mind about that, Douglas. Who's Mr. Crozier? He's a blacksmith. His forge is just over there on the other side of the square. Don't you think 12 years of age is a little young for a real sword? I'll be a master swordsman by then. Goodbye. <sighs> Goodbye, miss. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, can we go into any of these buildings? We're just gonna knock on the doors. Hello? I don't think anyone is home. I have questions for you. The door has been boarded up. The building looks like a ruin. Oh dear. But everyone's at the daggum church. Ooh, there's a bucket. I want this bucket. The bucket is rusty and full of holes. I don't want that bucket unless I'm going to turn it into a shower. Hello, Backsmith. Good day. Yes? You're going to be mean to me too? Mr. Crozier, I presume. Aye, George Crozier, <sighs> at your service. My name is Thomasina. Aye, can I help you? Are you a Bewley native, Mr. Crozier? Time for 20 questions. Aye, born and bred. That's where my father's forge before mine. How is business faring? I do an honest trade. There'll always be horses needing shoes and farmers needing tools. You let me know if you need out made or mended. I'll do you a fair price. Thank you, Mr. Crozier. I've had a bucket with holes in it. Do you know a man by the name of Leonard Shoulder? Oh, hi. Old Leonard. Have you seen him recently? No, not recently. Do you know where he lives? Why all these questions, lass? Oh, I need answers, that's why. I need to speak with him. He invited me to Bewley. Oh, he'll turn up. I've seen him in the plough and furrow from time to time. But do you know where he lives? I need to find him. I believe he lives somewhere out on the moors. Great. Can't tell you out more than that. Thank you, Mr. Crozier. Thanks for being so useless like everyone else. Do you know of a local oh. landmark named Hobbs Barrow? There's a fair many barrows found out on the moors, lass. Too many to put a name to. Not a soul in Bewley pays them any mind. Mm. What can you tell me about Bewley? I don't trust his words. We don't get many visitors here, outside of market days. But there's plenty of work for the village blacksmith. That's me. Where are you from, then? I arrived yesterday on the train from London, by way of Derby. Oh, aye. I've heard about London. You've heard about London? What have you heard? Plenty of factories there. Yes, indeed. The city is always changing and moving forward. Too busy for me, though, lass. I prefer a quieter pace. Aye. I can't say as I blame you. When do market days run in Bewley? Once or twice a month. The next one is tomorrow. How, How delightful. convenient. Oh, yes, delightful. Not convenient. But also convenient. Unless your vice is cabbages, there'll be naught to interest a young lady. I'll be the judge of what is interest to me and what is not, sir. I don't mind a cabbage. Then you're in luck. Thanks for your time. Aye. Speak to you later. I certainly hope not. I mean, I definitely feel like we should visit the church that was mentioned before. Oh, memorial plaques. An old lady. The woman has a kind face. She's probably horrid. Hello. Good day. Would you like to buy one of these cakes, pet? You just call me pet. I know, I don't have any money. Yes, I'd like to buy a cake. Maybe she'll give me one for free. Wonderful. I can tell you're not from around here, because if you were, you would know about my Bakewell puddings. They are quite famous. Curses. I have no more money. Oh, Dawn. That's unfortunate, pet. I'm sorry. I, I can't give them away for free. You can if you really wanted to. The money goes to the church, you see. And one cannot shirk one's duty to the church. Mm, okay. I understand. My name is Thomasina. What's yours? Mrs. De Plancy. Mrs. De Plancy. A pleasure to meet you, Mrs. De Plancy. Likewise, pet. Why does she keep calling me a pet? Do you know a local man called Leonard Shoulder? Yes, I know Leonard. What business do you have with him? It's a long story, but I'm trying to find where he lives. I'm afraid I don't know, dear. Father Roach has access to the parish register. Mm. He might be able to help you. Where can I find Father Roach? At this time of day, he'll be taking his exercise in Hearn Wood, to the west of the village. Thank you. Mm. I'll go find That's him. That's where we need be to go, Be sure then. to listen out for his merry whistling. Such a jolly man. <laughs> okay. Thank you for your time. Lord be with you. Ah, is this west? I guess... Oh, I hear the whistling. Oh, there he is. Hello. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> What are you doing? What is happening? What is happening? Are you choking? What 
is actually happening right now? My dude. Ugh. You're out here drinking, too. Does everyone drink? Um, you're not just gonna walk away like nothing happened. What is going on? Very sorry. You were just whistling. Oh, the shame. This malaise will not pass. Oh, the nausea. I need your help, young lady. Tell what? me what you need. Let the blood from my arm. What? Excuse me? Got me. I beg you. Oh my gosh. I don't have anything to cut you with. I have a key, but I don't think that's gonna work. Maybe your spectacles? Can I use the glass from your spectacles? Ouch! <gasps> the broken lens is extremely sharp. Indeed we can. Alright, I'm gonna blood I'm gonna let your blood Wait, where did where did it I can't oh I didn't pick them up. Oh. Um use the glove. Perhaps I shouldn't risk soiling this glove until I find its owner. Oh for crying out loud, use your handkerchief. This handkerchief was a gift from my mother. I hope she will understand. We're helping a we're helping a priest. I think she'll be fine. This should work. <laughs> I think she'll be okay with us using it. All right, let's cut him. Are you sure you want me to do this? Yes, it will cure me of my ills. I shall do as you ask, Father. Oh dear, just a little nick. Oh, ooh, ooh, blood. Feel better, Father? God bless you. Oh, th I yeah. already feel quite better. Really? I'm glad, Father. The rapid healing properties of bloodletting cannot be overstated. I'm Frederick Roach, vicar of St. Edmund's Church. I assume. My name is Thomasina Bateman. It's a pleasure to meet you. You feeling better? Are you feeling better? Yes. Thank you. Are you sure? What ails you, Father Roach? I... I just ate a rotten berry. That's all. Mm. I like to pick blackberries for my supper, you see. They are quite delicious, as long as you mind the bramble. My apologies again. I wish we had met in different circumstances. Interesting. Are you from Beaulieu originally? I don't believe him. I was born in our very own St. Edmunds. It's quite the story. Oh, great. You're going to tell me, aren't you? Do tell. My mother was sheltering there as a frightful tempest raged. And lo, did her waters break right there and then in that pew. <laughs> One could say that you were born into your role, father. <laughs> Indeed. When my mother told me the story as a young boy, I knew that this was my calling. Can you tell me about this man that I've been looking everywhere for? I'm looking for? for Mr. Leonard's shoulder. Oh, yes. Are you a relative? No, it's a long story, but he invited me to Bewley. And he didn't tell you his address? Mm, no, he didn't. He was to meet me last night at the Plough and Furrow, but he never came. I see. Well, let me welcome you to Bewley on his behalf. Oh, thank you. This guy's not a dick to us, though, thank like you, everyone Father. else is. Do you know where Mr. Shoulder lives? Let me think. It's been many moons since I've paid him a visit. Perhaps you could allow me to take a look at the parish register. No need. I remember it now. Mm. A fair hike across the moors. Could you please give me directions? Please. I'll take you there myself. It's the okay. least I can do after you waited me, so. Fine. Capital. Thank Capital. you. Capital. Just freaking someone help Just me, please. Just let me know when you're ready to pay him a visit. Now, I'll I'm ready now. I'll be here for the time being. I'm ready now, dude. I'm ready to go to Mr. Shoulder's house. <laughs> Let's go. Excellent. I feel the fresh air will do me well. Follow me. Okay. Lead on. I want to meet Mr. Shoulder. We've been trying to find him for so long now. I just want to go find this dude and find out what's happening. You sure this is the right way, Father? Bye. Oh, no, we're stopping. Good morning, Father. Wait, is this... Is this Mr. Leonard? Good morning, Mrs. De Plancy. Mrs. De Plancy, this is Thomasina Bick, a visitor to our We've parish. We've met. We've already had the pleasure of meeting, Father. Excellent. Miss Bateman, don't hesitate to try one of Mrs. De Plancy's wonderful cakes. I don't have any money. Yes, I've heard about her famous Bakewell puddings. I'll be here all day, young lady. But remember, once they're gone, they're gone. I really want one, but Those I've got no money. Those have already gobbled up all the gingerbread. You are doing God's work, Mrs. De Plancy. God loves pastries. He smiles upon us, Father. Miss Bateman, if you'd like to follow me. I mean, that is what we were doing before you decided to stop and talk to this old lady who won't give me any free food. <gasps> the crow. Let's talk of graves. 
of worms and epitaphs. No, we were on our way to a place. Why are we stopping every two seconds, father? Make dust our paper, and with rainy eyes, write sorrow on the bosom of the earth. Let's choose executors and talk of wills. Shakespeare? Quite. Hmm, educated, aren't you? Which play? Uh... Surely I don't have to guess. Oh my god. I unfortunately do not know Shakespeare well enough to answer this. I'm gonna say Macbeth. Macbeth? Magnificent guess, Miss Bateman, but I'm afraid that passage is from Richard II. I... yeah, I would have had no idea. Studying the work of the Bard is one of my favorite pastimes. That's great. Follow me. Please, just keep... oh my god, just keep going. I love seeing all these places, though. Oh. Well, let me guess, we're gonna stop and talk about this bench. Behold, the vast expanse of God's creation. The moors extend as far as the mortal eye can see. Thank you. Beautiful, is it not? I mean, yes? I think so. Indeed, sure. the moors are beautiful. The beauty of God's creation is that it takes so many forms. How can one take in such a view and not have faith? Why is Father stalling? Just take me to Leonard. Some look at these moors and think this a godless land. But I tell you, he is found in all domains. The Lord's work is all about us. Mm. Tell me, Miss Bateman. What? Do you believe in God? Hmm. <laughs> We probably shouldn't lie to the vicar about anything, so let's just tell the truth. I have a feeling he could probably sense a lie. I was brought up Anglican. The church was an important part of my early life, Father Roach. But what happened to my father eventually made me question things. Hmm. If you don't mind me asking, my child, what happened to your father? He had an accident when I was very young. What is happening? Did the father just inhale drugs? Come along oh. now, Thomasina. Let's get out of the rain. Oh, a flashback. Okay. Nurses. All roads lead back to this place. Remember what I told you, all right? Be a good girl. People are unwell here. They don't want to hear you running about making noise. Understood? Yes, mother. Good. And don't annoy the nurses. I want to. I promise I won't. Good. Now, let's see your father. No. Oh dear. Oh my, we have to control young us. Mama? Mummy? Is father dead? Mummy? Oh dear. Daddy, wake up! Oh my god. Good evening, Mr. Bateman. Hello, little one. You must be Thomasina. Y yes I think Daddy's not well. My name is Nurse Blaketon. I just need to talk to your mummy for a little bit. Okay. I'm sorry to disturb you, Mrs. Bateman. Mrs. Bateman? She's crying for a reason. Will he ever talk again, Nurse Blaketon? Okay, so he's not dead. The doctor is uncertain, Mrs. Bateman. There is the possibility that Mr. Bateman won't regain any movement at all. He's paralyzed. But we will do our utmost to look after Mr. Bateman here at Ticehurst, ma'am. He will have a nurse by his side at all times, I can assure you. Hmm. Damn. In these times, that's rough. What sort of god would allow this fate to befall such a kind and honest man? I'm sorry to hear this. God moves in mysterious ways, but he loves us all. Hmm. Come along now. Can we finally go see Mr. Leonard's shoulder? Leonard's shoulder, whatever his, not Leonard's shoulder, but Leonard's shoulder. Oh, who Hello? this? Uh, okay. He scampered off in a hurry. Who was that? Some primitive folk make their home out on the moors. What? I suggest you keep your wits about you when you are exploring, and don't stray too far from Bewley. Is that true? I see. How much farther to Mr. Shoulder's house? Still quite a walk, I'm afraid. Great, that just means more times for us to stop and but talk we'll about things. we'll get to him soon enough. 
You leading me astray, Father. Take a look at this. Oh God, what? Oh. Legend has it that this cairn has stood here for over a thousand years. How remarkable. The Devil's Toe. Ew. I beg your pardon? Well, that's what it's called. <laughs> the Devil's Toe. Oh, I see. Oh, come on, you're not so daft that you didn't understand what he was saying. Come now. Onward. Hmm. I really love the style. We walked and walked across that vast, featureless landscape. All the while, Father Roach was whistling away merrily. Just as I had begun to wonder if we were hopelessly lost, a building emerged from the mist. Mr. Shoulder's cottage. Finally. Oh. It's rather nice. Here we are, Miss Bateman. Unless my memory fails me completely, this is Mr. Leonard Shoulder's house. I mean, it has to be. Thank you for your help, Father Roach. Now, now. No need to thank me after your providential assistance today. We were quite helpful. However, I have something to ask you. Of course yes. you do. Please don't tell Mrs. De Plancy about my little scene in the woods. Mm. She will only fret. The poor dear woman has enough on her mind as it is. I shan't mention it. Thank you. Hmm, interesting. You'd better see if Mr. Shoulder is in. Oh, I will. Don't rush me. However, that is going to have to wait for next time, guys. I'm going to end the video here. I'm really digging this game. I love point-and-click adventure games. I love the eeriness and the mystery of this game in particular. I'm really looking forward to seeing where the story leads and meeting some of these characters. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like. Please leave a comment. Let me know what you guys thought of this game in the comments down below. Let me know if you're digging this as much as I am. Let me know if you want to see more of it. And if you're new to the channel, don't hesitate to subscribe because there's much, much more where this came from. And as always, thank you so very much for watching. You've been awesome. Let's play again soon and I'll see you in the next video.